Hello, my name is Julian Edgar and I'm the author of a whole lot of books on car modification. What I want to do in today's video is talk about the electric pumps used in water air intercooler systems. Over the years, I've built three different water air intercooler systems for my own cars. And in each case, it's the pump that's actually proved to be more problematic than people really believe. So up on the, on the screen in front of you, I've got a picture of a Subaru Liberty Legacy in most parts of the world water pump as used in the factory, the standard water air intercooler system. It's actually the best pump I have found. I'm not suggesting that you race out and buy one of these pumps, but what I am suggesting is the performance of pumps in water air intercooler systems varies enormously. And I think many water air intercooler systems have got pumps that are probably working quite ineffectively. That's what I found based on my testing. So let's have a look at some of the different pumps that I've tried and let's have a look at their different impeller designs because that's where the action really is. So I'll start off by looking at this pump. Now it's a Johnson pump, a 12 volt Johnson pump. I actually took this photo just a few minutes ago. I'm just using it now to pump water out of a big reservoir onto plants, onto trees that I need to water. And in that application where you've got a free flow in input, you've got a free flow output, the pump actually works really, really well. But it's not like that in a water air intercooler system because you are circulating water through restrictions. There's going to be restrictions on the inlet. There's going to be restrictions on the outlet. Now, the only way of getting over that on the inlet is to run a really big reservoir. The water just goes into that big reservoir and you draw from that. But in most systems, you use a header tank rather than a reservoir. And the header tank's just designed to cope with temperature variations and so water expansion and contraction. And in that case, you're going to have restrictions on the inlet as well as those restrictions on the outlet. Now, this pump, when I trialed it, actually in the system, you could hear cavitating. Cavitating is when there's air pockets starting to develop around the impeller and of course the performance of the pump dies away completely. And when I heard it doing that, I decided I'll pull the end off and have a look at what the impeller actually looks like. And here it is. Now, have a look at it. You can see it's just flat paddle wheels. It's about as crude a pump impeller as you could possibly get. And if there was any restriction on the intake, those crude flat wheels, those flat paddles, started to get air pockets in them, started to cavitate, and the pump was no good. Now, interestingly enough, when I turned the voltage right down, I could stop it uh, cavitating as the pump slowed down, but of course, a slower running pump is gonna be pumping less water anyway, so I was sort of back to square one. I then bought a Bosch pump. Bosch is a company I have a very high regard for and I have never had any problems with Bosch equipment except for this pump. Now this pump is used in Mercedes and I think also some BMW models to circulate hot water through the cooling system when the engine is off. Now, it no doubt works well in that application, but did it work well in a water air intercooler system? Again, the answer was no. Again, I could hear it cavitating. Not at low speeds, not at low voltages, but anywhere near full battery voltage, I could hear it cavitating in the system, and therefore it was not pumping effectively. I was incredibly disappointed because I actually went and bought the pump brand new, being pretty confident it would work in this system, but it did not. So I pulled the end off, to find it's got a very different impeller to the one that we looked at a moment ago, the Johnson pump, and a much more sophisticated impeller, uh, where water gets drawn in through the to the eye, through the eye of the impeller, and then it gets thrown out these edges. And you can see it's quite a, a good hydrodynamic shape, but it just didn't work. It didn't work when I had restrictions on the inlet and restrictions on the outlet. <coughs> Excuse me, and as I said, you're always going to get those restrictions when you've got heat exchanges that the water has to actually pass through. Then I went and dug out this Subaru Liberty Legacy RS pump, which I had on my shelf. It needed a bit of an overhaul, and I was very, very curious to see how well it would go. And the answer is it worked extremely well. It didn't cavitate, and it pumped plenty of water even when there were those restrictions on the inlet and the outlet. So as you can imagine, I was pretty excited to pull the end off and have a look at why this pump was working so well. Notice also it's got a pretty big motor, a big powerful motor, and it has a very sophisticated impeller. Have a look at this. You can see that it's got curved blades. It's very much like the mechanical water pump in an engine cooling system. And those curved blades, uh, and look at the shape of each blade, they don't cavitate and they pump plenty of water. 
Here's how I was testing the different pumps. This was the water air intercooler system set up on the floor of my workshop. And you can see there's the underbonnet heat exchanger, the underhood heat exchanger, there's the front mount radiator, the height difference between those two replicated what was going to occur in the actual car, and here's a bucket in which I'm measuring water flow, the pumps are all off to that side. Also have a variable voltage power supply, so I could actually see how well the pumps worked at different voltages, because in the car I actually control pump speed by changing voltage to them. Now, I'm not saying you've got to go out and get a Subaru Liberty Legacy pump, but what I am saying is really thoroughly check the pump flow when it's in the complete system. Don't just check it with free flow. These pumps are quite radically different in the amount they flow when they're just flowing freely into a bucket and drawing from a large reservoir. Actually test the flow within the system set up, and I think you'll be very surprised how some of these pumps actually work quite poorly. Thanks for listening.